Chapter 22, The Gem It was surprising to learn how easy it was to lie to Daddy. I just asked him if I could go to the movies, and when he said sure and offered to drive me, I said I'd ride my bike instead. He'd even given me money for popcorn. I pedaled faster, trying to drive out the knowledge that I was disobeying my father. I had the black feather in my pocket, but I wanted to get there before Liz went in, or I was afraid I wouldn't have the nerve. I thought about Miss Winthrop. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. Liz was standing on the curb when I arrived. Marley! She frowned. What are you doing here? I shrugged. Going to the movies? Liz gave me a look. You said you were going to the gym. You didn't say I couldn't come. She had to work real hard to keep the frown off her face. An African-American boy walked up to Liz. He was dark enough that there was no way he could ever pass. Who's this? he asked, pointing at me. My friend, Marley, said Liz. Marley, this is my little brother, Tommy. Her brother was only eight or nine. He had curly hair and a cute round face. I couldn't, I could probably talk to him. Kids were as intimidating as grown-ups. I decided he was Ovaltine, sweet and wholesome. Tommy looked over me. You look like a white girl. I am a white girl, I said. Then why do you want to come here? Tommy asked. My friend's cousin works at the Center Theater on Main Street, and he says that they have a new popcorn machine and velvet seats. I didn't know how to answer. Maybe he wasn't so sweet after all. You're going to get me in big trouble, said Liz. I'm not supposed to see anyone from the old school. I'll be grounded again. People were looking at me. Sorry, I muttered. I hadn't thought this through. I'll go. No, said Liz. A bunch of people have already seen you. The damage is done. You might as well stay and enjoy the movie. Enjoying the movie proved to be harder than I expected. I'd never been in a place with so many African Americans before. Heck, I'd never even been in a room with more than one or two. People were staring at me as I bought my popcorn. I wanted to disappear. I felt my courage shrinking like the wicked witch when Dorothy threw water on her. I tried to tell myself I didn't know everyone when I went to the white movie theater either, and the popcorn smelled exactly the same, but it didn't work. We walked down the narrow aisle, single file, carrying the popcorn and looking for a seat. Tommy first, then Liz, then me. Now hello there, Miss Elizabeth, bellowed the voice from a fat woman in a large hat. Hello, Miss Johnson, Liz said quickly, Liz said quietly. I tried to hide behind Liz, hoping she wouldn't notice me. Elizabeth, I can't tell you how nice it is to see you out having some fun. That's me, she said brightly. Fun, fun, fun. She waved like she was trying to move on. Miss Johnson took a deep breath and started coughing like she swallowed a fly. When she caught her breath, she said, Elizabeth, may I have a word with you? I knew it was wrong. She was upset that I was white. My face burned red with shame. It reminded me of Miss Taylor pulling me into the hall to tell me that Liz was colored. Now Miss Johnson was doing the same with Liz about me. Miss Johnson took Liz's hand and pulled her a step or two away, causing her to spill half of her popcorn on the floor. She shouldn't have bothered. I could still hear every word. What are you doing with a white girl? She's a friend, Liz said miserably. From the white school? What were you thinking bringing her here? I didn't invite her, protested Liz. She just showed up. Didn't she realize it could be dangerous for you? Didn't she think about the repercussions? Repercussions are like um, consequences. And I hadn't. I thought the brave thing to do was to go meet Liz at the gym. I thought it was the right thing to do. Now it seemed like I should have just stayed home. She's my friend, Liz protested. How can you be sure? Miss Johnson went on. Everyone was staring at us now. I prayed for the lights to go down and the news reel to start. Elizabeth, people have been killed over less. After, ta after taking such an enormous, and I might say foolheartedly, risk, you might at least... Miss Johnson, a familiar voice said sharply, what's going on here? We all turned and looked. There was Betty Jean wearing a blue skirt and a white blouse. It was the first time I'd seen her without an apron. She looked real pretty. This white girl has snuck into the theater and... I didn't sneak in, I told Betty Jean. I paid for my ticket. She could be a member of the Mother's League, a spy who... Betty Jean laughed. 
She's not a spy. She's the daughter of the family I work for. She's a good girl. I was so grateful. Miss Johnson harumphed. Are you saying you'll vouch for her? Yes, said Betty Jean. I'll vouch for her. Well, you're the pastor's wife, said Miss Johnson, but she still sounded annoyed. Thank you, I said to Betty Jean. She nodded. Enjoy the movie, Marley. But I didn't. My heart was beating so fast, it took me ages to calm down. Even though I was next to Liz and Betty Jean was a few rows back, I kept worrying Miss Johnson was going to come back and hit me with her hat. How had Liz never concentrated? How had Liz ever concentrated at school? How had she done math problems and written essays when she was surrounded by people who might hurt her if they found out who she really was? On the screen, the cowardly lion was being given courage, and that's what I needed. A wizard to pin a medal to my chest. For now, the old black feather would have to do. After the movie, we went out for a soda at a little store in the corner. The owner was colored, but he didn't look at me like I had three heads. He just took my money and went on to helping someone else. Tommy was friends with the owner's son and went to play with him in the back while Liz and I sat and drank our so and sat down to drink our so sodas. It'll be Halloween before I'm allowed out again, said Liz. I'm sorry, I said. I don't know what I was thinking. You were thinking like a friend, said Liz. Yeah, I guess I was. Is this goodbye? Goodbye, asked Liz. Please, Marley, for a girl who can solve a magic square, I'd think you'd be a little more inventive. But all we need is a time and place to meet. Mama's got me scheduled up to the gills, but Tuesday afternoons might work. I have to take Tommy to baseball, but I could probably sneak away for an hour or two. At the zoo? I asked. No, too public. Anyone could see us there. I tried to think like her for a moment. Imagine that there was danger looking, lurking around every corner. But it was hard when everything seemed normal. The movie and the soda in my hands. The cut on my thumb was almost healed. How about the rock crusher? I asked. What? asked Liz. The old quarry on the edge of town. I said. It's quiet. You mean the old forest with the rocks? She asked. I nodded. Sounds just about perfect. So as you can see, Marley and Liz are trying really hard to remain friends. And they've already faced danger. Um, and I think that this chapter really proves how Marley has become the dynamic character. Um, because she's facing her fears, she's standing up for herself and her friend, and frankly, she's even lying to Daddy because, you know, she wants to see her friend and do what's right and find her voice. So that's huge.